Romans chapter 7 verse 28. But I see another law in my members. Warring against the law of my mind. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin. Paul said, Paul said a law in my members fighting me. What is it fighting me? For L. L. For L. One, lost. Two, leisure. Three, laziness. Four, lateness. Now, let me explain to you. As a child of God, God knows that you are already blessed and God wants to bless you. The devil will fight in within you. You see, the greatest enemy is the battle you fight within yourself. Although we say about your friend can fight you, your neighbor can fight you with greed, with hate, with bitterness, it will affect your progress. But don't forget that the fight within you is so important. Because if the devil gets you in your heart, in your mind, he will start destroying your destiny. I truly want God to bless you. And I truly want you to be great in life. Now, what would the devil do? He will fight you with lust. L-U-S-T. What do you mean by lust? Lust is craving for things that you do not have. Lust is desiring something that is not your own. Today, people lust after a woman, women that does not belong to them. That is not your wife. But how dare you want to sleep with another man's wife? That is not your husband. How dare you want to sleep with another man's husband? And you are lusting after the another man's husband. That is not your car. But you are thinking of how to come claim the car to be your own. You are lusting after his hair. You are lusting after his back. After her back. That is lust. You see, listen to me. What do you mean by lust? This is not your own. But you desire it to be your own. There are people today. They are perpetual beggars. When I mean perpetual, they are beggars because of lust. People beg because they lost. They beg for money, beg for food, beg for anything. Even when they have money in the pocket, they will still want to beg to add to it. Why? It is lustful spirit. The problem of loss has made people to be insatisfied. They are not satisfied with what they receive. They are not satisfied with their wife, so they need extra woman. They are not satisfied with their husband. They need extra man outside who can give them money. So you see, they are having their own husband in their house, but they have another man they needed as a side support. Not being satisfied. How you see today, you see people not being satisfied with their church. You see people today, they are not satisfied with their church. Today they will be in this church. Tomorrow they will be in the church. They are not faithful to God. Tomorrow they will hear about something happening. They are, not, they are not satisfied with their pastor. Listen to me. And I told the people in the first service. I said, your pastor is the God God sent to you. You have to look at your pastor as an, as an agent of help. Agent of deliverance. A, an, an instrument God has said to be a blessing. And you must be satisfied with your pastor. He's just a man today. He said, this is my father. And I'm not satisfied to be my, that this man to be my father. Why did God use that man to bring you to this world? Have you seen a man who said, I'm not satisfied with my mother? I want to change my mother? If you say you are in this church, you must be satisfied with what the church is giving to you. And you must be proud of it. You must be proud of it. You will defend the church as your church. You will be proud of this church. You will, you, you will defend your pastor and because you are satisfied. You look at your pastor as your father. And as you look at your pastor, you obey your pastor. And that is where God sees you. And God bless you and bless you. God will bless you because of how you value your pastor how you value his work how you value his ministry how you are supporting him if you start complaining my pastor did not come to my house i was my pastor did not call me my pastor did not know my name i greet my pastor he did not greet me 
you are just going to cage yourself in such a way that even God will be angry with you. That is it. My pastor did not call me. He did not come to my house. He did not care. He did not care. Ha, listen to me. The duty of your pastor is to pray always in the house. Most of the time, we go into fasting. Why do we fast? We fast because of you. Because we are watchmen. We don't eat. There are some days in a week I don't eat. I will fast, not just sometimes dry fasting. Dry fasting. I don't have a problem. I'm not sick. I'm not having any problem in the body. I don't have problem of my children. I have children. I have wife. I have everything. But why am I? Why do I have to leave myself? Sometimes three days don't eat food. Every week fasting, in praying night and day, because I'm watching over you. Because I know I may not come to your house. I expect people around you, your home self fellowship, to come. But you, if you start carrying that thing on your mind and grudges, you are just intimidating yourself. Rather, we should walk with love. We should walk in love. We should all walk as a family, as someone who walk together and begin to work. So, lustful spirit is when you are not satisfied with what you are receiving, you become lost. And as soon as you lost and not being satisfied, you will start going down. You will start depreciating because the demon spirit of lust has ruled your mind. Leisure. You want leisure. You want comfort. Lost leisure. Leisure is the thought and the feeling. I want my own comfort. I can't go to church today. Listen to me. Listen to me. And I want to say, if you give yourself leisure, for example, now, I won't come to Bible studies. I won't come to Thursday services. I'm not going to come there. And you give yourself to leisure. You are depreciating. Listen to me. I have been in a church. And I, for years, I can't remember a time I don't go to Bible study. I can't remember, except I travel. I can't remember a time I don't go to services. Evening service, on, like on Tuesday, on Thursday service we do have here. It is in my blood. You can't stop me from it. You can't stop me. Some of us, we go to work. We come, after church, we don't come to Bible studies. We don't come to Thursday services. Evening service is not part of our, our services, our actually. Do you know what happened? We are giving ourselves to leisure. And God records everything you do. Listen to me. God record. God blesses us according to our service. If you like, say, I will always sing on Sunday. I will not sing on Monday. I will not sing on Thursday. So I won't come to church. It's your service. God sees your heart. You say, no, it's my work. God sees your heart that you know you can make it. But you refuse to make it. Now, what do you mean faithful? Faithfulness is that you know it is not convenient. Faithfulness is, it is not convenient for me to be in church, but I will be in church. It is not convenient for me to, to, to go to evening services. I, I, I'm in danger if I go. I'm in danger of coming back late, no transport. But even with that, I say I will go to church even though I will not get transport to come back. That is how God sees you and you decide to come despite everything. That's how God blesses you. God see the way you take it. God see the heart you put into it. God see your commitment. He sees how, how dangerous for you to come on Thursday. He sees how dangerous for you to come on Monday. And he said, I will be in church. Bible study, I'll be there. You make a covenant. The Bible says, all those who make covenant in their mind, make covenant in their heart, that this is what I must do. Then God opens his word of faithful passion page and begin to honor you. Honor comes from heaven. Honor comes from heaven. We may struggle, but when we do not receive honor from God, we begin to make mistakes. Now, friend, listen to me. Laziness. Lost, leisure, and laziness. Ah, I'm lazy. A lazy man would never say he was lazy. lazy. My body did not carry me. I don't feel like going to out today. I don't feel like going to church to this morning. Why would you not feel that? There's no way I as a person. And not because I'm a pastor. Right from when I was a young boy. There's no way laziness will stop me from going to church. My wife one time was, when we were married, she got pregnant of Jeffrey. The pregnancy was so heavy. 
she can go to a market where she will go to work and she will come back and say darling I can't go to Bible study because I'm tired after the business after today's business I work I say okay no problem I say I'm the one that owned the business since you cannot go to Bible study today every day of the Bible study don't go to church don't go to business stay at home so that you can go to church she looked at me I said yes if you cannot go to church but you can go to your place of work and God sees you when I said this to her she said oh my God she said even when I'm going to deliver till I will deliver this baby I will never miss church and she was carrying her pregnancy to church evening service and all that that is what God looked at faithfulness listen to me when God sees faithfulness and truthful in a man's heart there's no way he must bless him. It is a commitment. It's a dedication. It's something I say, I must do. But our friend over there, five o'clock, they wake up for prayer. We do come for telegraph prayer every 9 p.m. on Friday. That is when the other one want to eat. That is when the other one. Whereas our friend over there, they will close their shop. Even if you bring money to give them, when the time for prayer reach, they will say, hold it. Let me go for prayer and come back. How many of you can close your shop and somebody brought one million naira to you and say, hold the money. Let me finish and come back. It, the Bible says, accept your righteousness. Exceed the righteousness of the scribes and forests. You cannot make it. God said you can't make it. Except you dedicate yourself in such a way that you can look at yourself. Say, look, my time for God is for God. Even if you bring money, hold the money, bring it tomorrow, I will attend to you. But I must give it to God, my God. I must give it to God. That is it. So laziness has robbed people from the benefit that God has supposed to give to them. No wonder we pray. We pray and we see little results. Laziness has eaten deep into our mind. The fire that young men are supposed to get, they will come. This day I see people when they come to church, even when we are praying, or the pastor is preaching, they can be on outside on the street. Even pastors can be outside on the street. They will be talking to them. And pastor is talking, and prayer is going on. They could be drinking coke and be relaxing. In those days, I run if I'm late. I run. I run to church if I'm late. God sees our heart. God sees how lazy we are. God sees how weak we are. Listen to me. Everything we do has a reward everything we do for God has a reward God did not God doesn't only bless you because of the time you spent for prayer there are people we lay hands on God does not answer because God look at their mind that their mind has not been circumcised her mind their mind has not been broken have mind their mind have not been loyal and faithful to him they are not taking the things of God so seriously they are lukewarm they are cold and because of that God said if I give this person this thing it won't, it won't make use of it properly. And that's why I'm telling you this. Friend, God want, God has started opening a new page in our lives. And I'm telling you this because I don't want you to lose feet of this blessing God has given to us. Cast laziness from our life and put seriousness in the things of God in your mind. Number three, number four, lateness. You are late to pray. You are late to this one, late to walk. You are late to go to the market. You are late to go to travel. You are late to the, even the house of God. You are also late. This can cause a big problem. But what God will want is this. Is word spoken. Word spoken that can change your life. Words of victory. Words of victory will change your life. Friend, listen to me. Let me show you. Let me tell you what happened. The story of this. There was a man who was sick and they say okay you need to go for the hospital he got, went to the hospital the doctor said okay put him on a, on, a, on a bed and they put him on the bed the Nazareth they tested the first result they say it's typhoid malaria they started treating typhoid malaria they said the other result will come um, two days or three days after so they were taking malaria he was improving he will, people will come and say, I'm looking better, I'm good, no good. And he can, he's smiling, no more feverishness, no more headache. 
everything is good. They say, oh, they say, they say they, he told the doctor, why don't you discharge me? I'm okay now. He said, no, let's, let's just receive the other results first so that we know if there's any other life sickness before we can dismiss you. It's okay. So he was eating and laughing and people are coming saying, no, I'm going, to be, I'm going to be discharged tomorrow because the remaining results are coming out tomorrow. I'm going to go home. The following day, that result came out and they say you are, that he, he is HIV positive. As soon as they landed him HIV positive, diarrhea started. Headache started. Fever started. Before you know, he was growing leaner every day. The sickness that has gone, everything came back again. He was dying. And after three days, just three days, they told him of HIV, the HIV result. He was already lean already. He was so down, he would go to the toilet. He would, every symptom you think was already on him. And they started treating. The treatment was not giving any solution. And after about five days, they came to him and told him, I said, ah, Sir, we make mistake. Oh, please, I hope you will not be offended with what I'm going to tell you. He said, what happened? He said, has it gone worse? He said, no. That the blood sample we gave to you was not your own. Your own is negative. Your HIV negative. He said, what happened? He said, please, we, we, we mistakenly wrote the name in a different way. That the name, we now did on that test again. We discovered it was HIV negative. The man stood up from the hospital and started shouting. Hey, he was shouting, he was running. They, he was celebrating. Everybody was shouting. He was shouting. People were once in the hospital said, what's happening to this man? Just the news that he was negative. He got strength to stand. He got strength to run around. Do you know what happened? That same day, diarrhea stopped, headache stopped, feverishness stopped. He became all right. What happened? Words. Words. What are you hearing? What you hear can destroy you, and what you hear can remove you. Friends, listen to me. As we're going to pray, I want to take note of this. If people are poisoning your mind, they will make you to contact spiritual HIV that will make you sick. 